Good evening. We'll call the Burlington City Council February 5th, 2013 meeting to order. I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome you here tonight and hopefully you will return. Also ask that this time if you silence any electronic devices that you have. This time I'd like to call Council Member Bob Ward for tonight's invocation. Uh, let, let it pray. As we assemble to do the business of the citizens of our city, we ask that we be given wisdom, insight, and understanding so that our efforts might further the interests not only of our citizens but all people. And we ask that all who are gathered here tonight will be open-minded and fair and accord each other respect when we have sincere differences of opinion. And we ask that all of our deliberations and decisions be guided by the highest standards of ethics and by the laws of our city, state, and country. We ask these things for the well-being of our citizens and all people. Amen. Amen. This time I recognize uh, Dr. Beth Powell for a presentation to the council in reference to the Sister Cities Program, Gotchen City South Korea Exchange students. Welcome, Dr. Powell. Thank you, Mayor Wall. Well, they came through the um, airport armed with, with these things. And first of all, I would like to present you with a plaque which has the names of the participants of our recent exchange program. I have some goodies for um, council members. Um, and I hope you have a pocket or a place to carry these. You, you won't be able to find these things around here. <laughs> They're not car keys, are they? Just recognize a few people um, and um, look forward to the um, visit in the future of the mayor of Guachan, Yo In Kuk. Um, he has expressed an interest in, in coming here um, shortly. Um, just to recap that we had a visit um, on January 4th, Mayor Wall uh, welcomed a group of 20 students from Guachan. And these were um, mainly 15, 16, 17 year old kids, um, 10th graders. They took courses at Burlington Christian Academy for two weeks. During that time, they visited Elon University, the battleground. They went to the Nanotechnology Center, the Civil Rights Museum, and other local destinations. They also finished up their trip by taking a bus to Washington, then New York. Um, and um, I, I think that this was a, a very, very much a cultural enrichment for the entire community because there were so many people involved in it. And I'd like to just make a, 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 a quick recognition to the people who were key in making this happen. First of all, Mayor Wall and the council members welcomed the kids when they arrived. Um, Tony Laws and William Gaddis 
Thank you, thank you, thank you. Whoa. Chrissy Ross and the staff at Burlington Christian Academy, they just kind of made space for these kids. Russell Guy, president of the local sister cities, was very key. Um, also developing the website. Anne Honeycutt, without Anne, we could not have made it happen. Diane Ford was our coordinator at Elon. You know, she's the librarian um, in the university library. And a very key role was also played by um, Master Sang Ho Lee. I think you know him. And um, he, he was instrumental as a translator and helping us coordinate all of this. So it was something of just, you know, community enrichment. And I think this is something that gives us, gives us a look forward into the 21st century. It's, you know, it's very important in terms of possible um, future economic development and so forth. There is a website where you can see a whole lot of photographs um, from this experience. It is um, www.sistercities-burlington.org. I mean, should you have that, right? Okay. And um, we would just really like to thank Mayor Wall and all of the others who made this possible. Thank you. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is the Code of Ethics. This time we recognize City Clerk Renee Ward. Thank you. Approval of the minutes A, January 14th, 2013, the work session. B, January 15th, 2013, City Council. <coughs> approve the work session minutes for the 14th and the City Council meeting for the 15th. Second. Is that a motion or second? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Adoption of the agenda. Move to adopt the agenda as written. Second. Is that a motion or second? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Consent agenda. Item one, these items are typically non-controversial. If anyone has any questions about the following items, please let us know. A, to adopt ordinance requiring the demolition of buildings for properties located at 641 and 643 Montgomery Street and 0 Michael Street. B, to approve a guy wire agreement between the City of Burlington and Duke Energy Carolinas, LLC, to obtain an easement and right of way of 0 0.067 acres located near the South Burlington plant property adjacent to Duke Energy's substation. C, to approve a memorandum of agreement between the City of Burlington and the City of Greensboro for the donation of a mass casualty trailer for use in mass casualty, casualty excuse me, incidents within the city or region. D, to approve a final plat for Douglas G. Harris Jr. and wife Angela S. Harris. Property is located at 1089 No Ridge Drive as shown on plans by Carolina Cornerstone Surveying and Land Design dated December 4th, 2012 and containing two lots. E, to award the 2012-13 annual audit contract in the amount of 74,000 with South Stewart, McGowan and King LLP to authorize the mayor and finance director to execute the contract. F, budget amendment 2013, Edward Brown <coughs> Justice Assistant Grant spelled out in your agenda. Move we approve the consent agenda as read. Second. Got a motion to second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Public hearing. To, a public hearing has been scheduled to receive citizen comments on area housing and neighborhood improvement needs and proposed activities for fiscal year 2013-14 community development plan. This time we'd recognize Shauna Tillery. Ms. Tillery, welcome. Um, good evening, Mayor, members of Council. Um, before the public hearing um, tonight, I've been asked to do an overview of the Community Development Block Grant um, regarding um, what we can do with this allocation that we receive. And I'll try to make this brief. Um, um, the planning stage of the grant happens every year, um, and it begins, you know, with the public hearings where we receive citizens' comments. Um, 
we as the grantee as the city must understand the community's needs interests and objectives to make effective choices on how to expend this funds any activity through the CDBG program must comply with the five-year consolidated plan which we are in the third year of um, and it takes into consideration those needs of the community um, our annual action plans which are our budgets are completed each year of the five-year plan as an update to that consolidated plan and then at the end of the year our CAPER, which is our Consolidated Annual Performance and Evaluation Report, is submitted to HUD um, regarding um, what we have done with the funding for that particular year. Um, with the CDB CDBG program, you must meet a national objective with any project that you do. Those objectives um, are um, three different ones. They must The activity must benefit low to moderate income persons, either that be through an area <laughs> benefit, serve a limited cl clientele population, or involve some type of housing. Um, the second objective is it must address some kind of slum or blight, and this must be an area that has been designated and meets a slum and blight, blighted area under local law. Or there's a third option where you meet a particular urgent community development need. Um, that would be something where um, in New York with the um, hurricane that came through, they're actually doing CDBG funding using that type of activity. Um, within that, um, you have to select activities that comply under the statutes. Um, is that activity um, eligible under the CDBG statutes? Does the activity fall within a category of ineligible activities? Um, does the activity meet one of the national objectives? Um, will the activity result in a benefit of at least 70% um, of low to moderate income individuals? Does the activity conform to the required OMB circulars? And does the activity pass an environmental review and clearance procedure? So each activity that we fund through the CDBG program has to go through each one of those steps in order to be considered eligible. Um, some types of eligible activities that can be funded with the CDBG grant, um, acquisition of property, public facility and improvements, whether that be acquisition, construction, reconstruction, rehabilitation, or the installation of improvements. Public improvements, including streets, sidewalks, water and sewer, and parks. Clearance and remediation activities um, regarding the removal of buildings and improvements. And public services, whether that be supplies, materials, pr crime prevention, child care, health, drug abuse, education, fair housing, energy conservation, and welfare. And within that public service um, activity, there's a cap on how much money you can fund for those type of activities. Um, other um, types of eligible activities include special economic development activities. Um, those normally have to go through HUD at the beginning if that's an activity that you're looking to fund um, so that it makes sure that it conforms to the statutes there. Um, eligible planning and administration expenses, relocation assistance, rehabilitation on residential and commercial buildings, um, code enforcement salaries in blighted areas, home buyer assistance to help purchase a home, and um, there's also the option where the, you can apply for a Section 108 grant. And that's where a entitlement community can apply for up to five times their grant allocation for eligible activities under the terms of a loan. Um, some types of ineligible activities um, under the grant are buildings used for the general conduct of government. You cannot fund any activities there, general government expenses, political activities, purchase of equipment, operating and maintenance expenses, new housing construction. Um, within your CDBG grant, there are spending guidelines that have to be met. Um, again, no more than 15% of your grant can be spent on public service activities. So um, you have that cap there. No more than 20% of your grant plus your current year's program income can be spent on administrative activities. And program income for us is the repayment of our housing rehabilitation loans um, because those are set up as deferred loans which payments come back to the city at the end of the 20 year period. Um, and you must spend at least 70% of your current year's grant allocation to benefit low to moderate income persons in your community. Um, there's also a rule for timeliness. Um, the city cannot have more than 1.5 times your grant allocation sitting in your line of credit at the U.S. Treasury. So there's a April 15th deadline that um, you have to meet to expend a certain amount of your CDBG funds for that particular year. 
Um, regarding our timeline for the upcoming fiscal year, um, we are right now identifying projects and finalizing those um, within this month. Um, we're beginning the environmental review process um, in the following month um, for each every project that we fund with CDBG fundings has to have some type of level of environmental review completed. Um, in March, um, we developed the action plan for HUD, which is the actual budget on what activities are going to be funded. Um, in April, the completed action plan is available for public comment for the entire month. Um, April 16th, we held the second public hearing to receive comments on those proposed projects. Um, and then May the 7th, um, the City Council can approve those projects to be submitted to HUD. May 15th is the deadline for the action plan to be submitted to HUD. Um, since we are nearing the end of our five-year consolidated plan, we will begin planning for that new plan, which will be for 2015 through 2020 for next year. So I kind of wanted to give you um, a, an idea of what that's going to look like. Um, Again, the next year's budget will be the last action plan for our current consolidated plan. Um, in the winter of next year, of this year, and early 2014, um, the planning will begin for the following um, action plan. Um, the summer of 2014, we will begin the planning of the new consolidated plan, in which multiple public hearings and public meetings will be held um, to get citizens' comments on what needs they see in the community along with um, leaders in the community. <coughs> Does anyone have any questions regarding that? Questions? questions. Okay. And we can move into the public hearing at this okay. point. Anyone on this side that would like to speak? You would state your name, please. Yes, sir. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, I'm Kep Paler, uh, representing the Construction Training Partnership. It's a training model that involves a unit of government, the home building industry, and also NC Housing Finance Agency. And uh, I've met with them recently. They've indicated that they would like to continue as, as we would. Um, we train some of the low-income people that you just saw on the PowerPoint. Uh, we try to benefit the community um, through construction projects and, and within the housing program. And uh, we work closely with, with Ms. Tillery to do that. And um, all of our students also get the lead renovator training. Uh, having to do with lead paint that's in housing before 1978. We appreciate being here, and um, that's all I have unless there are some questions. Any questions? Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank you. Anyone else on this side that would like to speak? Hello, I'm Ron Osborne, Director of Residential Treatment Services. And first I'd like to say, that uh, we probably would not be in business over these past few years if it hadn't been for community block grant funds. Uh, Y'all have helped us out a lot um, when we built the two group homes over on Crestview, putting in a cul-de-sac and connecting water and sewer. Uh, in the Hall Avenue facility, putting in a sprinkler system, uh, uh, remodeling bathrooms and uh, those kinds of things, uh, new windows and things over the years. Uh, this year I come to you um, asking for your assistance this year with community block grant funds in replacing the roof at our Hall Avenue facility. Uh, in that facility uh, we do non-hospital medical detoxification, facility-based crisis services for people in mental health crisis, and then we have uh, uh, halfway house beds for uh, men uh, in recovery from substance abuse. And uh, we uh, the roof uh, was last put on back in the 70s, in the late 70s. Uh, we're, uh, we're in need of a new roof now, and uh, um, right now the roofer that's working with us has uh, come over and patched a few things and thinks that he can keep it, keep it up um, and keep us all right until probably about July or so, and uh, that's when funds would be available uh, if you all approved these kinds of things so we could get a new roof. 
but uh, we'd, um, I'd be glad to answer any questions that any of you might have, but. Uh, um, any questions for uh, Mr. Atkins? Yeah. That was, um, what did you say the name of the street? Uh, Hall Avenue, Hall. 136 Hall Avenue. Hall. It used to be the old teacher right, right. uh, for the school system, and we've been in, in that building since 1975. Good. Thank you, sir. Anyone else on this side that would like to speak? <coughs> Anyone on this side that would like to speak? Yeah, please come forward. My name is MJ Wilkerson. I'm the director of Alamance County Public Libraries, and I would like to thank you for your support for uh, North Park Library, which is one of the branches of our library system, and it's been funded um, through uh, partially through the um, the block the community block grant. Last year, we saw. Um, 4,309 people come in the doors at North Park. We circulated 10,232 items. That's books, DVDs, audios, um, that type, magazines, things like that. And your continued support through funding uh, is greatly appreciated. Thank you, ma'am. What, uh, Ms. Wilkins, I have a question. What increase is that from over last year? Last year, um, we saw 4,298 people, so 11 more people came through the, the, in, in fiscal year. Now, that's fiscal year 2011-2012. Um, we circulated um, over 1,000 more items than the year before. And... Um, we, we, this year we had 89 programs that 1,992 people attended. Last year we had 99 programs, so we had fewer programs, and I'm not quite sure why that was. Um, we are working on various programs to get more interest and more, um, more use in the community. We started a learning garden in conjunction with the, um, the farmer's market there, and we'll continue that effort. And uh, we're having our grand finale of our Alamance Reads at the Mako Bigelow Center as part of a library program. So we're, we're constantly trying to come up with ways to engage the community and the library. We changed our hours this year. Um, they had been from 3.30 to, to 8.00 and we changed them from one to five to see if that would make a difference. So we're, we're nudging it to see what we can do. Thank you. Thanks. We do have wireless out there and we leave it on even after we're closed. Thank you. Hello, Mayor, thank you, Councilman. My name is Leo Welsh. I'm the operations manager for Allied Churches of Alamance County. And I come to here to talk about the two projects that we have presented this year for repair. Uh, two years ago, you guys were fortunate enough, we were fortunate enough for you guys to grant us the ability to fix our roof, fix our bathrooms, and to put new heat and air in a building that was built in 1989. And that was the first improvements we had made to that building since that time. We are asking this year to, we have a foundation on the east end that is falling, cracking, that we need to support and uplift, and we have a situation in our parking lots with potholes and uh, curbing and everything coming up, and it's just, it hasn't been done in about 30 years either. Um, we had served 660 different people last year and served over 90,000 mills. So we have constant traffic through this building. Um, and we're just asking, we, we would have the matching funds to come up with the community block grant, and uh, we're just hoping for your approval. I'd like at this time to introduce the executive director, Kim Crawford, who was started on Monday. She's replacing Hunter Thompson as the executive director, and just thought I'd like everybody to meet her while we're here. Hi. Welcome. Thank you, um, Mayor and Councilman. Again, I just want to reiterate what, uh, what Leo said. Um, Allied Churches is um, dependent on the money that we get um, from the city for the CDBG block grant funds. As he said, there is a number of people that come through our building. Okay, I've been here two days, so I don't know all of our numbers. But, um, um, you know, we serve as a, as, a, as a cornerstone for this community for a number of low-income people, people living on the margins. And the, the, the respect and dignity that those people deserve, um, we expect to provide for them in our facility. 
Uh, most of the time when we think of a homeless shelter or a drop-in center, think of what you picture. And it's usually not the nicest place. Um, the furniture doesn't match. The foundation is falling. Um, you know, windows are cracked. And those are the types of things that when we talk about how we value members of our community, that is a clear way that when someone walks in, you know, they're already down on their luck. They're already in crisis. And what we can give to them is not only a safe place to sleep, safe food, but a, a comforting and welcoming place. And when we talk about how we can help our community at allied churches and in that particular facility, we can help these people get back on their feet. They get back on their feet, they get back out, they get into an apartment, they get a job, they start putting money back into our community. And then it becomes a win-win for all of us. So along with Leo, I would highly encourage you to um, follow Shauna's recommendations and support the uh, structure uh, improvements that we would like to do at Allied Churches. And again, on, on, um, on my second day here, I can tell you that, and I'm from Duluth, Minnesota, and I was in Duluth last week. Not one day did it get above zero. So uh, I did call back today. They have four inches of snow on the ground, and I don't have to wear a coat. So um, the community has been incredibly welcoming to me, and, and thank you very much for that. I just think you should know how great I think this community is. So thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Crawford. Anyone else on this side that would like to speak? Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. My name is Wendy Covington. I'm the Interim Director with the Alamance County Community Services Agency. And for those of you who may, may not be aware of Alamance Community Services Agency, we are a community action agency. We've been around for nearly 50 years now, uh, providing services to low-income families in Burlington and in Alamance County. Um, we, of course, um, have been recognized as a local community housing development agency for a number of years now, and we certainly support the support that, or appreciate the support that the uh, city has given us in completing um, our projects in the past. We completed the Westmoreland subdivision in 2001. Currently, we are working on the Apple Tree Village subdivision, which is a 18-site home uh, located in East Burlington. Um, we are planning to assist low-income uh, first-time home buyers uh, with um, preparing to purchase home, a home at our subdivision. Uh, many of the families that we work with lack the know-how uh, when it comes to buying a home for the first time. And recently, uh, lenders have uh, become more stringent with their underwriting criteria. Uh, and also, um, lenders are asking for potential buyers to invest more into their homes. Uh, there is also a huge need for uh, credit restoration as well. Uh, we have three certified housing counselors located uh, with the agency who, is, who are experienced in uh, providing uh, counseling assistance to prepare potential buyers to become homeowners at our Apple Tree Village subdivision. We ask the, the city's support in continuing developing homes at the subdivision. We are planning to provide home buyers education and training uh, for the potential buyers. And of course, we will continue our partnership with the North Carolina Housing Finance Agency. And through the finance agency, we're able to provide down payment assistance of up to $25,000. Uh, the agency provides assistance in preparing these loan documents as well. Um, we also are going to assist families with identifying low interest rate mortgages so that they um, can have affordable mortgage payments. Um, the agency also um, provides um, match monies to potential buyers too through its IDA program. Uh, families who are in that program uh, are required to save a minimum of $50 per month and uh, that is up for up to two years and at the end of the two-year time frame the agency will match uh, those um, 
monies dollar for dollar. And of course, the agency will continue to collaborate with the local Habitat for Humanity as well. We uh, thank the council for its past support and we look forward to uh, working with you in providing affordable home ownership opportunities to citizens of Burlington and Alamance County. Thank you so much. Anyone else on this side that would like to speak? All right, I'll move to close the public hearing. Second. Got a motion and second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Brings us to the uh, new business. Item number three, City Council will consider adopting the Burlington Pedestrian. Ms. Mayor, if, if, we could, I, if I could just make a comment about it. One thing I think that's, uh, we have a lot of repeat folks come to, that come back in. I think that's good because I think what we're doing is making a real impact. But you know, one of the things that I hope the citizens in this town recognize that this City Council over the last 30 years uh, has always tried to focus the use of the City Lot Grant funds in East Burlington. I don't think any of those funds have ever been spent in any place other than East and North Burlington. And I think over the years we've made a substantial impact in both of those areas. And I hope this council will continue to uh, adopt that sort of philosophy as we move into the next uh, next years with city block. Any other comments? Uh, I think uh, at this time I'd recognize Mr. Kirkman. Mr. Kirkman. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Councilman, as you may recall, the finalized uh, pedestrian master plan was presented uh, to City Council at the October 1, 2012 work session. Uh, development of the plan was uh, involved significant uh, public input as well as a, a significant amount of data collection. Uh, the plan provides policy and program uh, recommendations that encourage multimodal activities. Uh, it also includes a pedestrian network toolbox. Uh, which scores future sidewalk uh, segments based on various uh, characteristics such as proximity to schools, uh, destinations, as well as worn uh, footpaths, as well as other criteria. Uh, this toolbox will assist staff and council in prioritizing and funding future sidewalk uh, efforts. Staff is currently using this toolbox as a guide in developing uh, projects for council's consideration. The plan also offers action steps uh, the first of which is to adopt this plan, and that's why we're here this evening. Adoption, uh, according to this, to the plan, adoption does not commit the city to dedicate or allocate funds, but rather implies an intent on the city's part to implement the plan over time. Uh, adoption of the plan will allow the city to apply for certain public and private grant opportunities that may come available. And finally, adoption of this uh, pedestrian master plan will provide a clear vision for staff and council uh, for pedestrian planning activities. So we do request uh, this evening adoption of the plan, and uh, I'm here for questions as well as other staff that's been involved with this. Questions or comments for Mr. Kirkman? This is, I think we were looking at the turn time. Oops. Turn times included in this project. Right? That's the plan. Yes, we to extend those si the sidewalk over in that area. We have. Um, I don't know specifically exactly which ones you're looking at. I know we've uh, looked at some. Front of Street our, and right. Yeah. Yeah. Was this the the con uh, connector between um, Hillcrest, the day school, and Turn Time? This this includes the whole city, this but the those the areas are included. Yes. Yeah. That's the safe schools. Uh, safe for houses yeah. school. So this basically covers the whole city. This is spells out and gives us a guideline for where we want to expend funds over the next five, six, seven years. And probably even beyond that. Okay. Yeah. All right. And this is also required for us to adopt this so that we can qualify for certain grant funds either by the feds or through the state, is that correct? Yeah, certain of these grant opportunities, there's a little checkbox on the application, do you have an adopted uh, pedestrian plan? And right. now, now we'll be able to check that off and, and have a better chance of getting those funds. I, I know we've missed, we may have missed some uh, funds in the past, and I think we'll move that we adopt this Burlington Pedestrian Master Plan. And a second. Got a motion to second, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you, Mr. Kirkman. Next time, the staff report on free bulk collection period. This time, we recognize Mr. Kirkman. 
Thank you, Mayor, Council. I just wanted to take this opportunity to uh, remind everyone about the free bulk collection period, which started yesterday. Uh, in December, the City Council approved waiving bulk collection fees uh, for a period of about two months from February the 4th through March the 29th. Uh, bulk trash includes items such as furniture, mattresses, rolled carpet, metals, bulk limbs and yard waste, as well as appliances. Uh, it does not include uh, items such as tires, batteries, building materials, automobile parts, uh, hazardous chemicals, electronic waste, and recyclables. Uh, this is the third year in a row that uh, City Council has offered this to residents and the spot response has been very positive. Uh, public Information Office has uh, gotten quite a bit of information out on this, including a, a large article in our recent City Works edition. Uh, if residents have any questions, uh, they can visit the City's website. There's information there. Or uh, they could contact the sanitation division at 222-5111. Uh, so that's uh, another way they can get more information. So I just wanted to give that reminder, and if there's any questions, I'll be glad to try to answer them. Thank you. Questions or comments? Thank you, Mr. Curtin. Public, that moves us to public comment period. Uh, moves us to city council comments. That one, Chief, do we have the uh, trailer from Greensboro yet? No, sir. No. Oh, it's for you. Not yet. Okay. I looked at Chief. Okay. But I'm sure between Jay and I, we'll make we can make sure that you see it. When we <laughs> you know, I'm dying to <laughs> check it out. Any other comments? Uh, just a couple here. Commend uh, the street department. We did an outstanding job, Mr. Kirkman. We sent a couple emails over already, but make sure publicly we have mentioned this tonight. Did an outstanding job. A lot of the citizens. We've had a lot of positive comments and feedback. So. We know they were away from their families uh, several hours there late in the night, and we appreciate that. Also, as a reminder, the council is an earlier start date this year. Town Hall Day will be March 27th, and that will be in Raleigh. Uh, if you could let uh, Ms. Ward know your intentions. A reminder, East Burlington Community Work Group, that will be March 7th at 6 p.m., Fairchild Community Center. And I'm assuming, Ms. Holly, that uh, she is a contact person. I'm assuming there's some information on the website about that as well. Also, remind you that the council retreat will be April 8th at the Kernodal Center. We changed that date. Uh, the council decided to change and waiting for the new uh, council member to come on board. So we decided to uh, change the date and move it forward. Also, at this time, I'd recognize City Attorney Bateman uh, in reference to what's next uh, in, the, in the process. Mr. Bateman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council. Uh, in accordance with the policy adopted by the city council and the schedule that you adopted um, at the last meeting for consideration of an appointment to replace Mr. Ross, I'd like to review with the council what we as a staff perceive to be the mechanics of going forward with the process. Uh, at the work session last night, you were provided with the information which we have received from the interested applicants. Uh, that was provided to you for your review. The policy as adopted requires that the council select from among those applicants three names at our next meeting, and those three names will be scheduled for the personal interviews at the work session. In selecting the three applicants uh, who will be considered, that also requires action by the council. It will have to be a council decision by a majority vote as to which of the interested parties will become uh, applicants who are interviewed. Uh, it is our suggestion as a staff, and the, the policy is somewhat silent about how to proceed next, but we would recommend that each member of council bring, to, uh, the four of you, bring to the next meeting uh, your list of three that you would like to have considered. Uh, those three would then be revealed and read out. I uh, uh, assume, Mr. Mayor, you and I have discussed it. I would conduct that portion of the meeting for you. At that time, we will go alphabetically, naming the names of those people who have been recommended by the four members of council. During the first round uh, of voting, each member of council would have three votes because you are going to select three applicants. Uh, if three names each receive three votes, then the procedure will be over. We will have selected the three applicants. If we do not get three in the first round of voting, we will eliminate 
uh, we will select the ones who have been selected and then go through again on the list. And this time you'd have two votes or one vote, depending on how many seats are to fill, until the three are chosen uh, by majority action of the council. And uh, unless I receive other suggestions or comments tonight, I would assume that that's the way the council would proceed. Questions or comments to Mr. Bateman? And that schedule, Mr. Mayor, is, is based on the concept of the next council meeting being, I believe, February the 19th, which would then lead to the work session on the 4th uh, for the actual interviews of the finalists, and then that would uh, give the opportunity for, uh, if, if, if the council wishes, to make that appointment on the following meeting on the 5th of March. Right. Any questions? So just a quick review in my mind of what you said, then each council member will bring up to three candidates' names out of the list that was given to us last night. Yes, sir. Okay. And then each person will read off their three, and then from there, the first person that gets three votes, then the second person that gets three votes, then the third person that gets three votes will be our three finalists to come into the work session. Is that correct? Yes. Well, the way I've uh, suggested that we do that voting is that you give me the list that you have. Oh, okay. And then uh, the list will be consolidated okay. and voted down gotcha. alphabetically. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. All right. Any other questions or comments about that process? One last thing um, before we uh, move out, or adjourn, excuse me. I was thinking about our conversation last night uh, about the school security uh, issues um, and we talked about visibility we talked about the police cars and we, we talked about trying to figure out ways to help the school system with that discussion so I guess I'd ask Mr. Owen every year don't we purchase new police cars and tr sell some old police cars is there a possibility that we could not sell some this year and maybe utilize the older part of our fleet to spread them out um, uh, for visibility purposes at some of these uh, schools that we talked about last night, the elementary schools? That certainly w would be an option, uh, not um, uh, selling the uh, surplus vehicles at auction. That's something that could be discussed uh, in the next budget, sure. Okay. And while we're getting closer to the budget, the other thing uh, that I would like to at least get some numbers on and moving forward would be the possibility of us hiring uh, six additional resource officers. And when I say six, I'm talking about six elementary schools. And then if indeed uh, the private schools wanted to be included in that, that would mean nine additional offers, uh, excuse me, officers. And then with that, maybe we could have some dialogue with, uh, with um, the school system in reference to going in halves or something like that. Just as we're coming up on a budget work session in the near future to have that dialogue and at least put forth some effort in trying to help resolve uh, some of the issues uh, with uh, school security, but that's just you know and, and something that someone said last night and I don't know if this is feasible or not, but we have an awful lot of because of the retirement system with the state for <coughs> for law enforcement folks uh, We have a lot of folks that go out early They sometimes end up down at the sheriff's department doing duty down there around the courthouse and and even beyond uh, just the courthouse you know, if there was some way, even if it took local legislation, for us to, uh, with those individuals, uh, if it doesn't mess up their retirement with the retirement plan, if it took local legislation to, do, to get around that, to be able to utilize some of those individuals on a part-time basis uh, in our, as those resource officers. And that's possible. Is, is, is a limit on how many hours uh, the, the, the retired employee can work and the amount of money they can make. But, uh, you know, it, it's, uh, I think Mike even mentioned last night that, of course, Mike won't be worried about that then. Uh, he'll be at a better place. But, uh, uh, but we, we certainly could, uh, could look at the possibility of, of rotating some potential part time employees too to get some coverage. Mm -hmm. uh, that we, we presently don't have. Right. As, we're, as we're doing with the, with the parks. And That's right. Yeah. Doing and I talked to the officer Saturday at the police barbecue. By the way, it was outstanding barbecue. But the, one of the officers that is, is working the park uh, was very complimentary about what had taken place from start to the present, uh, what they were seeing and, and doing. So 
Uh, it's just some, some thoughts. Obviously, this is a big concern among not only our citizens, but across the, the country as well. And as we're moving closer into the budget cycle, maybe we can um, help that situation along. So, anyway. well, I can tell you we have uh, already begun putting those numbers together, just well, in good. anticipation that uh, someone might want to see those at some point. But, uh, so we'll, we'll be ready with that. Good. Thank you so much, Chief. Any other comments for council? Otherwise, we're going to take a motion to adjourn.